Hi, this is a uh, introduction to uh, the things you see here on the picture, what we call the uh, conduit closures. And um, I will tell a little about how they work and how uh, we are going to support them. Uh, also, the underlying data model we're going to use. Um, as you can see here in the picture, we have we have kind of two kinds of conduit closures. At least that's how I like to think of them. We have uh, the one before here to the to the left. This is kind of closures. You you uh, you have like a box, and then you put some some of your conduits through that box. Typically, you have some kind of multi conduit or multi duct to put through it. Then you cut out the outer duct of the multi-conduit and then you cut some of the inner ducts and connect them to some other ducts that goes through some other conduits. Uh, and all these holes here they call we call them ports. So this box can have, you know, typically have a, a number of ports or number of possible you can say places where you can put some pipes in. Um, and they, what what common for all these here is that you you uh, do this stuff and then you close it and then you maybe bury it and you don't open it anymore unless there's problem with it. So it's kind of a um, box that you, uh, you 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 connect things and then you're finished um, and it's it's not that accessible afterwards. On the right here we have some other boxes that you also can consider as a conduit closure. We do that underneath in the system. They actually model in with the same objects in the system as these guys on the left. The difference between the one here on the left and the two here on the right is that these here on the right you can open up and access. Um, but they basically work the same. It's a box. It's a typical what we call a well. And in that well you will have some holes where you put in your multi ducts. And then inside the well here, you will typically just, you know, let the ends of the micro ducts just end there. And you will not connect them together. Like you will do in the, the one to the left, you typically connect things together, right? But here you will just let them go in. And then, because here you can actually access the stuff. So, so, so what they do here is they put all the slack of the cables and then they can, you know, like after they have blown, so they can, they can start from a well and blow some cable through some pipes, and then they will typically go through the pipe system and through some of these on the left here, and then after they finish, they will put the slack down here. So that's a, you know, the slack of the cable. So, but but from a system modeling perspective, and also the way we're going to display it, they're pretty much the same. I mean works pretty much the same. That's what I'm going to show you here. Underneath in the, in the, in the data model, uh, I've chosen to model it uh, very simple like this. So I say, okay, I treat a conduit closure like it's a box that has four sides, always. I have never uh, experienced any customer who have these things with more than four sides. Maybe one day they will have, I don't know, then we have to extend this stuff. But I think for now it's fine to say, okay, these guys have four sides. I've chosen them to model like we have the size named like one, two, three, four, clockwise. So here 12 o'clock is side one, and we have side two and side three and side four. Each of these sides can have one, yeah, zero or more ports. And they are also always named with a number, they're numbered uh, clockwise. So if side one has two ports, this one will be one and this one will be two. So when you query the stuff and get data back from GraphQL, you will get something like this. Uh, say, okay, this, this, this thing here has uh, an um, uh, array of sides and, and each side there will have a number. And then from the number, you know if it's here, 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 and here. And 
each side has an, a number of ports, also numbered, and and each port is connected to some countries, right? So this is the basic model that model this thing. This is this model you kind of pull quick and you have to display it in the URL. Okay, hope that makes sense. Here I have, yeah, here I have kind of you can see where very very common conduit closure. It's um, called the I type, uh, inline type. It works like you typical have this multi conduit sync uh, running in a, in a trance, and then you want to branch out some of its inner inner uh, conduits, and then you use a box like this. Um, so you cut a hole in the the big one, the the multi conduit, cut the outer the out here, and then you you uh, can attach some we call them port adapters. On, on, on this black box here. So you can see here, here you, it has like two kind of holes here or you, you, some place you can put a hole, put something in. And here you can actually attach something, an adapter, like a little port, or you can put some pipes in and, uh, in and out, right? So you can have two here. So in our model, this will be more like with the square thing here with the four sides and side one will where we place these two ports if they are used. If they're not used they will not be there. But if they're used, we'll place them there. Like here they are used. You can imagine sometimes they don't use them. They just have to extend a pipe with a new pipe because these multi conduits come in a certain length and then you have to extend them. And then they will place one like this and just connect all the pipes together. And they also register them in the system because they want to know where they are. But in this case here, we have put, we use the two ports. So the model underneath will look like this. Uh, the data you get back, right? So hope it makes sense. Um, in terms of how to display it or how to display this. Uh, we have this diagram that um, that kind of tell how things are connected. My idea is also that we do that very simple. So we have just a kind of box basically, and you you if you you see there's a port on the side, you just distribute them <coughs> evenly on the on, on on the side. And of course, the size of them depends on how many conduits there are in them connected to them. You can see up here we have two single conduits, or two conduit segments, so one per port. And here we have like 10 because the, this is a multi conduit going in that port and has 10 uh, inner conduits. So, so the idea is you build something up like this um, from the data to read. So this is actually this data you see here. When you read that, you can you can build up things like this. Um, and then, yeah, you can see here, these two here, actually they work the same, right? This guy here also have like one, one multicolored conduit running through it. And then it, you can branch out some in a conduit. So it looks like this in real life, but we just display it like this in the system. We don't have to kind of display it very nicely so you can see it works like this. You can see this is these are actually uh, bended out like this, but I think that's something, I mean, we don't need to do that in, uh, at least not in the start, it's just nice to have. So we just model everything like with this box. I think that's perfectly fine for a start. Um, so I just to say that these two here, yeah, I mean, they, they work the same. Um, and here we have an example of the bigger, bigger junctions, so bigger conduit closures that has, you know, what we put several multi conduits inside them. So here we have one running through and one multi conduit where we branch out several uh, inner conduits too. And this is just model like this, right? So, and these two, this down here is the same kind of a T junction. It's also, we just model like this in the system. Uh, 
mean in the UI. Then um, the idea is, of course, that <clears throat> you have this kind of, you can say you have this, you start by drawing this, where you have some, I don't know what it's called in the diagram, well, some kind of connectors or whatever here. And then by looking at the connectivity and the data, you can see, for example, that this, this conduit here is connected to this conduit. Um, so you can you can you can uh, draw this uh, you can make a connection from here to here. So basically, what happens in real life if you cut that you cut this one over the red one over, then you connect it to to this one. Now this one is connected here. There could also be also just one part here, and then the the, the one of them will just there will be no connection. It will just be, I mean. You can imagine that you can have um, this situation too, right? So this one is not there. Oop. Like this. Also, so then we just have branched out one of these, so the other one here is not used. It's just hanging there. <coughs> so this is uh, the idea that that that. My idea is in the middle here, in the box here, we just draw a line between here. We don't put all kind of text or kind of thing in the middle here because I think it would be difficult to, to see. And, and I know the customer, the diagram they make, the, they have, they, they, they actually put a lot of text inside here. But my idea is we put the text outside here like this instead because it's much easier to do in a program, I, I guess. Um, so here we can actually tell where does this, Cable go from and to so so this one here it it, it, it actually heading against the node called H A two stands for handhold number two and it goes up and head this way to splice point number one so but then you can very easily see okay where are all the conduit is heading okay so by being able to put some labels here on the sides on on, on the ports. That's my idea. So to create something like this it would be very, very powerful actually because you have actually a lot of information just in this diagram. You can see where things are going. You can see how things are connected. I also like to have the numbers on here. This will be the uh, text from you also you get from the data uh, because you can actually have some multi conduits where they have like five blue uh, conduits in it. And in the conduits, they are each numbered marked in some way. Also, it's nice to have these numbers because some, some technicians are colorblind. So, yeah, that's why I put them on. So, but I guess this is possible to create some kind of UI that can display this stuff. It's quite a, I mean, it's, I hope so. <laughs> um, it, it should be kind you can create some rules for, for building this up. Um, um, yeah, then the final thing, the final wish is that we can, of course, see how the, the conduits are connected, but then we can also see if there's a cable inside it. Because one of the very, very important information for the one who's gonna implement this, this conduit, this conduit closure, is the kind of, uh, they can, also if you have to inspect it or change it or do something with it, that you can see, okay, here in, in this blue one that's actually blown a cable, a 32 fiber cable, and it goes from here to here. If there's a cable blown in the, the conduit, we just show where the cable starts and we don't care where the conduit starts. I mean, we can always create something, you click on it and then you get some more details, but but this will really be a very um, extremely nice information to have. Uh, that you can see which conduit are actually empty and which, and which has a cable blown into them. We can also imagine we make some different calls on the cable depending on if they are actually implemented and they have to be implemented. I mean, if the planner has planned that this cable should be blown in this conduit, but maybe it's not blown yet, maybe we can have some kind of call well, depending on the status and whatever. But this is, you know, something we can always optimize on later. 
for the diagram like this here is really, really useful. There's no system I know of that can make stuff like this. So it will be a big, big help for the user to be able to click on things, to click on the junction point and, and get a diagram up like this. Because today they actually say to create these by hand because otherwise the field crew cannot figure out how to do things in real life. <clears throat> um, the final thing I want to display is this one here. So this is my idea how we should support the wells the same way. So you can imagine, as I said before, that <coughs> that here we, we typical that the, the countries just go into the well but are not connected to each other. But instead the cables are flown through things. And here my idea is to do it like this. So so basically the same functionality you connect, we connect something from one port to another. Or one terminal inside a port to another, going to the data. And then you can see, you know, how things are connected. The labeling might be a little different because what we like to to maybe show is not where it goes, but where what kind of equipment it goes to or something like that. But but that's something we can handle in the back end to return the, the, the label that the user wants to see here. Uh, but I think this again will be a very, very nice uh, overview of how the cables are, are you know, blown inside the, the well. Um, so you can imagine if you have this, if you open up and you see all this stuff here, how do you know what is what and where it goes? You can see they have some labels on the cables. So of course they know the cables that they can follow them and see, okay, this guy goes into this and this guy's going there, but maybe they have to, you know, blow a new cable and it will be very nice. They can see it like this and they can see, okay, I need to blow this, this brown one here and I have to connect it to this equipment here in the, in the cabinet. So, so I hope this is, this is, uh, kind of some ideas is some kind of uh, you could say um, some kind of wishes from the user that what we we like to be, be able to kind of uh, have the system uh, generate for us when we are dealing with conflict closures so this was an introduction to it in the next video I will uh, go in more technical mode and, and show you how it's put into the system and, and how you query the data using GraphQL and also how you can actually modify these by sending commands to the system. I will also talk a little about that. So, but um, hope this introduction video kind of uh, gave you an overview of, of, of what we like. I, I know we, we have talked about this stuff in, in, in some other videos and you already know some of the wishes, but I think this one is a little more detailed um, what, what we like to, to be able to do. Okay.